Hello, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to undergroundwellness.com. Today we're talking about fat loss, talking about leptin, talking a little bit about insulin. And for the nerds out there, if you want to learn the super complicated, in detail version of this, you can read a book called Mastering Leptin. You guys are totally going to love that. If you're not so much of a nerd and you want the simplified, fun version of it, you can always check out my ebook, The Dark Side of Fat Loss. This is the printed version right here, but you know, people like the printed hard copy version of it. It's got really cool graphics like that on leptin and uh, it's just pretty darn dope. So check that out, darksideoffatloss.com to learn all about healthy fat loss. Now leptin is like this really forgotten hormone. It's underappreciated. People don't talk about it very much. We tend to focus on insulin and you know the effect of refined carbohydrates as well as other things like excess polyunsaturated fats on insulin levels and insulin resistance and whatnot. And we oversimplify things with this whole calories in and calories out approach. It's like fat loss is like a math problem, which it isn't. I'm going to show you today why that calories in calories out thing can be very, very counterproductive to a lot of people and pretty much ensure that you gain all of that weight back. Now, one of the reasons why people don't talk much about leptin is because of the fact that it's a, it's a relatively new discovery. It was discovered in the late 1990s. And so we've been talking about insulin for like the last 50, 60, 70 years. It's relatively new. And before it, uh, leptin was discovered, it was thought that our fat cells were just these unsightly storage bins for excess consumed energy. Now, what we found, or what they found, of course I didn't find it, what they found is that your fat stores are actually an active endocrine gland. Now, what I mean by that is they make things. Your fat stores actually make inflammatory chemicals and they make hormones as well. And one of those hormones is called leptin. Very, very critical, very, very crucial. Now, I always like to say, Human beings, when left to their own devices, will wipe themselves off the face of the earth really, really fast. And so we have to have some type of survival mechanism in us. So we've all been hardwired with this uh, starvation defense system that I like to call, call it leptin. And what it does here is that we have to remember, we can't forget that our ancestors, you know, they probably lived in places where there was times of feast, and there were times of famine, and then there was another time of feast. Now, when there's no food around during those famines, we had to live off of our fat stores, and that's where leptin comes in. Our bodies are really all about survival. It's what they do. So check this out. Your fat stores are always in communication with your brain. At least we hope they are. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, the particular part of your brain is called your hypothalamus. It's like your fat stores are always sending a phone call to your hypothalamus telling it what, telling it what what's going on. And the hypothalamus, it's going, hey, you know, let's talk about me. Are Sean's fat stores cool enough right now for him to make it through this famine? that never really comes. Like our bodies don't know that we have like supermarkets and all that stuff and convenience stores and uh, an endless supply of food. It's still hardwired for the old school, you know what I'm saying? So it's saying, hey, does Sean have enough fat stores to make it through the famine? Because when that famine comes, we're gonna have to burn those babies up. Now check this out. Here is a fat cell. I'm sorry, adipose tissue, I should say. And within there, we've got the little fat cells. Again, this is a simplified version. And in those fat cells, they are producing leptin. So you see the little green L's in there. And that leptin is going to make that phone call to the brain. And the brain says, hey, Sean's fat stores are cool. Now what he's going to do or what my brain is going to do is going to say, fat stores are sufficient. It's going to keep my metabolism cranked up. And it's going to keep my appetite at bay because it doesn't really want any more fat. It's not really telling me to go eat up the house because it, there's no need for me to put on more fat stores. So this is what happens when leptin is working well. Good healthy metabolism, it's cranked up and the appetite is down. Now let's talk about that time of famine for our ancestors. Now during the times of famine, again, they lived off of their fat stores. So the fat stores got smaller and smaller and smaller. Now how much sense would it make if you're burning up your fat stores because it's a famine and there's no food, how much sense would it make for your body to go, hey, let's keep this metabolism just totally humming along and let's keep this appetite down? No, that wouldn't make sense because if the metabolism was still fired up, then you burn through all these fat cells and you would simply die. And so what happens is, again, we have the fat cells 
and we just have a little bit of leptin in there. And that leptin's making the phone calls to the brain. The brain's saying, oh, fat stores are down. Why do I know that? How does the brain know that? Because the leptin's down. There's not that great signal anymore. So you got insufficient fat stores. The brain is going to slow down the metabolism. It's going to talk to the thyroid to do that. And it's going to increase the appetite by increasing something called ghrelin and MPY. You'll learn all about that in my book. But it increases the appetite to motivate you to go find some food. Because if you don't find any food and this gets too bad, you're probably going to die. That's not a good thing. And so these two things are really critical. This is when leptin's good. This one is when leptin's low and everything's functioning well. Now, you guys are probably thinking, well, Sean, I'm overweight. I got a lot of fat tissue, which means I should have a ton of leptin talking to my brain. And so you would think that your metabolism will be cranked up and your appetite will be down, but you can find the complete opposite. Your metabolism is slow and you're hungry all the time, right? Now check this out. You very likely have something called leptin resistance. And what happens here is you have all these fat cells, you got all this leptin. You see all the green in there? It's not too well lit. See all the green in there? And it's making the phone call to the brain, but the, the brain's ringer's off. It turned the ringer off so it can't get the call. So it's blocking, it's resistant. The leptin has no influence on the brain. So the brain's thinking, leptin must be low. Fat cells must be low because there's not much leptin coming through. So it thinks the body's fat stores are low, the metabolism slows down, and the appetite increases. I want to come to back, this is really crazy, this right here. This is what a lot of people are dealing with, and uh, we'll talk about some of the causes in just a second. I want to come back to this one, because I missed this one here. I missed a really important part there. <sighs> this person right here is not eating sufficient food because it's a famine. So this person is burning through muscle tissue, burning through fat tissue as well to survive because the calories are significantly lower. Leptin's talking to the brain. Brain says slow down the metabolism, increase the appetite. What we are doing these days with our calories in, calories out approach is where we're giving ourselves a voluntary famine. We're putting ourselves through a voluntary famine. This is exactly what we're doing. So the metabolism slows down. This is when you say, oh my God, I've hit a plateau. It just seems like my metabolism slowed down. I've been doing all this, you know, working out, and nothing seems, seems to change. That's what happened. This is what happens when you're doing your fat loss program and you're, you know, you get home from the gym or from wherever, and all you want to do is eat everything in the refrigerator. And you're like, come on, willpower, 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 and go and do nothing about this leptin situation going on. And think about this. I've said this on my radio show many times. Why would a caveman or a cavewoman go jogging during a famine? Because that's exactly what we do when we cut our calories significantly and we go to the gym. In vol or say, I should say voluntary famine and we're going for a jog. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. We have to change our approach and start doing healthy fat loss. But yeah, so resistance, left to resistance. What are some of the causes here? Got the causes down here. Number one would be caloric restriction significantly cutting your calories during the voluntary famine. Insulin issues and blood sugar surges. Insulin and leptin are like brothers from a different mother. You know what I'm saying? They, they, whenever insulin is negatively impacted, you're gonna negatively impact leptin as well. Now again, I've said this in other videos, it's not just refined carbohydrates. It's excess polyunsaturated fats as well. It's excess alcohol consumption. It's sleep deprivation. It's stress. It's toxicity. It's all of these things. So we just can't have tunnel vision and connect insulin with carbs in general. You know, it's refined carbs, not carbs in general. But stress is going to cause insulin or leptin resistance. Um, overeating can cause leptin resistance. You know, people do that all the time. Increased triglycerides, which is typically due to refined carbohydrates, are going to cause leptin resistance. Excess fructose, and before the 80, 10, 10, 30 bananas a day people come, come after me for saying that, I'm talking about high fructose corn syrup. You know, high fructose corn syrup is in everything. You look at any packaged product, you've got fructose in it. People are consuming it many times a day, contributing to their leptin resistance. And then lastly, 
I had Dr. William Davis, author of Wheat Belly, on my radio show a couple months ago, and he said that there's now research coming out showing that wheat can be playing a role in leptin resistance. So we got to clean it up. We got to get back to eating real foods. We got to start eating smart, exercising smart, going to bed on time, reducing our toxic load, improving our digestion, you know, looking for all these missing links, fixing our hormones, you know, having a more, again, holistic approach to fat loss. We have to kind of embrace healthy fat loss because this type of fat loss right here, it'll work short term, but that weight is going to come back because as soon as this person right here starts eating their old diet again, <clears throat> because you're going to fall off. Like Paul Check says, the tie rolls in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Those excess calories that you start to consume when you fall off your diet are going directly to your fat source. Because why? Because your body's all about survival. And it says, hey, pack those fat sores on because you never know when the famine's going to come. We all know it's not coming, but our brains don't know that. And so that is leptin. That is something that a lot of you guys probably didn't know about fat loss. Again, the really simplified, fun approach to that is in the Dark Side of Fat Loss Lessons from the Underground. Pick it up, darksideoffatloss.com, or go ahead and download the first chapter at darksidepreview.com. I'm out. Peace.